Tá, Rafa Mito na área aí, trazendo pra vocês aqui a final senior do Pokémon EU e C, tá? Na final do campeonato que teve agora 2024 pós-rotação, a final do Mundial, o Mundial do Pokémon. E vimos a classe Júnior aí, quem não viu o vídeo tem aí o vídeo da classe Júnior. E esse aqui é o vídeo da classe Senior, faltando da classe Masters. Vamos analisar o deck aqui da classe Senior. Se você curtiu esse tipo de vídeo de Pokémon Training Card Game, já aproveita, deixa aquele like para ajudar a gente no canal, se inscreva se não é inscrito e ative o sininho das notificações do PKB Nardes ao mundo dos games. Se bora! Vamos jogando aqui para ver quem é o primeiro ou o segundo. É o Benny Billigan contra o Gabriel Fernandes. Regional campeão em 2024, tá? São Paulo Regional Campeão, é o Gabriel Fernandes, ele é brasileiro, tá? Ele venceu o Regional de Curitiba, ganhou o Regional de São Paulo. Em 2023 foi campeão do mundo, Gabriel Fernandes, muito bom. Vamos ver quem ganhou. Tem Charizard X. E box ancestral aqui, hein? Esse é de box, hein? Essa parte inicial, que é a parte de, de ajeitar o deck. Cara, o deck é assim de box ali. Vamos se preparando aqui. Bora, bora começar o jogo aqui. Começar o game logo. Começou aí. Aí, começou o Charmander e Rorimon Baby, né? Gabriel jogando aqui, já usou uma outra bola, eu queria puxar, já puxou ali um Greninja, essa carta na próxima rotação vai rodar o Greninja, a próxima rotação vai ser tensa, mano. He has a sort of support engine here for Gabriel. It's not as powerful as something like Quick Search, but it's a lot less of an investment and allows Gabriel to play more of these ancient cards. Of course, Vengeful Fletching allowing you to deal 70 damage plus 10 for each ancient card that includes Pokemon and trainer cards in your discard pile. Really, that big number towards the end of the game is going to be 200, or rather 26 of those ancient cards as 330 damage will be just enough procurando aqui. Pokémon Spec, while being a way to draw, it does booster damage up. We'll just see the Radiant Greninja get grabbed. 
O, o Benny tá meio puto, né? Com essa demora aí. É, que a zona de descarte dele aqui. Usou a habilidade, descartou uma energia e catou duas cartas. Puxou a bola. Vai puxar mais um Pokémon. Por que ele puxou outra bola? Eu não entendi. Ele deve ter algum Pokémon na mão dele bom ali. Show Coraidon. Vamos ver aqui. Gabriel começou bem ativo, hein? Ah, ele vem de... Ativou uma energia. Passou. Não pode atacar no primeiro turno. Porém, o Bane pode atacar no primeiro turno. Só não pode evoluir no primeiro turno. Palfin, ele tá fazendo uma anotação ali. Fez uma anotação aqui, provavelmente alguma carta que ele queria deve estar na, no, na zona de premiação, né? Puxou um Charmander e um PJ, né? Pra formar lá o Pidgeot, né? Caso o Charmander roda, ele tem outro Charmander lá. Pra ver o que ele vem aqui. Isso que ele tem ali. Ordem da chefia, mano. Passou. Usou a ordem de chefia e passou. Usou a ordem de chefia para não tentar, tentar tomar dano no Charmander aqui. Manter o Charmander dele. Aí, Usou ali o explorador. Pega cinco cartas. Cinco cartas de descarta três. Aí usou para puxar mais duas energias que esse vaso ancestral. Aqui ele tá deixando assim que ele quer ver quantas cartas ancestrais tem, né, para poder dar dano. Usou Pokestop. Plugou uma e passou. Foi boa a estratégia do Bane. O Bane fez a ordem de chefia, né? Usando aqui Pokestop também. Ele perdeu a evolução. A evolução é bom porque. Acho que ele não tem Pokémon pra evoluir aqui o Gabriel Fernandes, então. Não é necessário essa carta pra ele. Puxou mais um PJ, ele quer ter PJ. Usou mais uma Poker. E catou mais um Charmander. 
pretty much bought himself a turn with that boss's orders, but it will be all for nothing if he's not able to capitalize <laughs> off these six cards he's going to draw. Yeah. And I think in this instance, I think maybe one of the reasons why Benny opt uh, opted to, you know, not... Ligou uma, plugou uma energia, né? Que isso, que isso, que cera. Que cera, você pega a sua mão, coloca embaixo do baralho. Baralhado, claro. Todos os dois jogadores e puxa quantas cartas de, de prêmio você tem para pegar. Então cada um vai puxar seis cartas, cada um tem seis. É que está gravando. Eu esqueci se estava gravando ou não. Certo. Ele passou. O Benny não formou ainda, né? Não formou, eu acho que ele vai tomar já nesse, nesse turno. Vai tomar nesse turno já. Mais dois cards aí, de energia. Tem um recuperador de energia na mão dele ali. Vem um Charizard radiante ali na mão do Benny. Você brasileiro aí, Brasil, Brasil. Brasil representando daí. Oh. Uh, temos ali o ainda o, o... Greninja ali para usar as habilidades, né? A habilidade da Poké. Pegou outra Pokestop. Pegou os dois itens. Descartou o estádio. Eu vou querer fazer. Super Vara. Pegou o maluco. Outro maluco. E uma energia. Jogou uma Nest Ball. Foi bom hein? ele, jogou uma Nest Ball para botar lá mais um Pokémon. Porém, ele tá jogando só de Baby, né? Tá ah, só de Baby, né? E aí ele já detonou lá o Charmander do, do maluco. Perdeu a Heroescape, hein? Perdeu a Hero Cape. Ele usou a habilidade da Poké Parada. Perdeu a Hero Cape. Só pode ter uma carta dessa. Cada jogador só pode ter uma carta dessa no seu baralho. Complicou pro Benny, hein? Benny não conseguiu formar nada e o Gabriel já tá atacando, já destruiu um Charmander dele. Você sabe que tem evolução aqui? Aí já decidiu evoluir o Charmander em vez do PJ, né? Aí vai, pode, pode plugar três energias, né? Até três energias. Para ver o que ele vai fazer. Cara, eu formaria primeiro o PJ, cara. Não sei o que ele tá querendo fazer. Pra ver. Ele só ligou duas energias. Ele nem ligou uma no PJ pra puxar. Talvez ele queria formar o Charizard dele, né? E aí, porque o Charizard, cada vez que o adversário vai pegando ponto, ele vai ficando mais forte, né? Ah, ele plugou uma energia lá e fez a troca. Tá certo. Ele plugou no PJ e fez a troca. A energia é descartada. E ele arrebenta um Pokémon do Gabriel. E aí empata o jogo. E lá vem a vez do Gabriel agora. Puxa um Coraidon. 
Tambor, hein? <risos> Puxou um tambor ancestral. Puxou um tambor ancestral, cara. Legal. Draw um card para cada Pokémon assim no jogo. Para cada Pokémon ancestral no jogo. Legal. Ele tem um, ele tem um, dois, três, quatro, né? Why they decided to play it and how they constructed it and big thing they noted is they took very specific counts and really thought about the fazer? total amount of ancient cards in this deck. They really know what numbers they want to hit. 330 is a big number, so sometimes even just that extra one ancient card can make or break. Being able to get that one hit knockout super late in the game to usually close it out and give yourself the victory. Yeah, that's a funny thing, right? You think about Awakening of Drum uh, as, you know, obviously you actually draw cards, but it's just the fact that it has text ancient on it, and it's an instant play item that can get Show you damage, and damage is almost like, you know, a plus power, plus I draw a bunch of draw cards that are in one in this deck. Four, five, six, keep counting how many cards there is in the discard pile, I believe 13 or 14, so we're a little bit... Ele separou o que é que tem ancestral e o que não tem para poder dar dano, né? Uh. Professora Kala plugar energias. Professora Sada, né? Carta 3, energia do bagalho. Três cartas do bagalho. Plugou o Menegê no Coraidon. Agora o Coraidon pode atacar, hein? Coraidon pode atacar, hein? Vai fazer agora. Bastante dano, né? Ó, ele já deu dano no Zard lá, ó. Deu o quê? 120, 180, 220. It's a little bit tough, I guess. Yeah, the superior energy retrieval and the counter catcher makes the most sense. Superior energy retrieval in this deck, not even so much for getting energy back. Obviously, you can do that, but it's just a great resource. Jogou a Eri fora. Essa carta da Eri aqui tira dois itens cards da da mão do cara. Olha, puxou um radiante ali. Gabriel's in a position where, if he wants to, this knockout on Charizard is very, very feasible. There is 220 damage, so if there's four ancient Pokemon in the world, bate Coraidon ali. Zoar Kala, plugar energia. Essa carta aqui é muito necessária para esse deck aqui, né? É muito necessário essa carta. Gabriel That's no problem for Gabrielle. Just want to double check the resources. Harry can sometimes get rid of those pieces that you planned your whole game plan around. So may have to just adjust a little bit. Does have some of those more ancient cards. The uh, 
looks like Earthen Vessel in hand, has something like the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, and we'll just play the, uh, the Earthen Vessel, discard this Flutter Main, and this deck is getting very, very thin. Yeah. I think only three or four cards left here for Gabriel, but does have ways to recover cards so that he will not deck out. Uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna see a surprise Chi Yu here from Benny to this card too. No, we're not. It's not in the, de it's not in the deck list, but uh, you know, some, sometimes it is something you gotta, you gotta bear in mind if uh, you, know, you get the deck too thin and uh, you just end up, I mean, we saw that yesterday, of course, uh, with the Chi Yu Mill in the top four game of Alessandro versus uh, Zaya. That was a big find there for Gabrielle off the prizes. Did find that second copy of Super Rods. Sometimes you really need to put just that one last copy of Roaring Moon into play to just make sure that you keep all your other Pokemon in the discard pile that are your ancient Pokemon and just have that last attacker. So I'm sure Gabrielle breathing a little bit of a sign of relief. The rest of the prizes, they're good, but they're not going to be as impactful as that Super Rod. Yeah, yeah, definitely important to find that. It just uh, yeah, find more attackers and to make sure that you don't end up decking out. Of course, it's the last way you want to lose. Uh, finally, looks like finally, Pokestop finding some help for Benny. Is free items off the top there and great items at that. Now finally has Rare Candy plus Ultra Ball. So if there is something like a Charizard EX or a Pidgeot any piece here, I don't think Benny has either of those. If there was either another rare, if there was either another Rare Candy, a Charizard, a Pidgeot, any of these pieces, we could really start cooking here. Benny is just going to be in a pretty awkward position, may have to just grab this Pidgeot and think about how he wants to go about the rest of this turn. He can still make this work, he can still use that Forest Seal Stone, of course that V-Star power has yet to be used, but it would be at the cost of putting in one of these low HP V Pokemon, that Luminion and Rotom, both easily being able to be knocked out something like the Vengeance Fletching. Yeah, it's not a great feeling, and I, and maybe you just have to do it this way. Maybe you just grab that Luminion, because of course I can grab you the Arvin, and then that would get all the pieces that you need to put it together. But like you just said, you put down another very low HP V Pokemon on the bench, it just makes Gabriel's prize map even easier than it already is. It will just be that Pidgeot. I think Benny understands that with sort of how far behind he is in terms of how good Gabriel's board looks and what attackers he has established, he cannot give any easy prizes, especially with that Hero's Cape being unavailable. So we'll just see Benny use that rare candy, evolve into Pidgeot. This Charizard can attack this turn into the Coridon if there's an energy attachment due to that Excited Heart ability. Currently, its attack requirement for Combustion Blast is two Fire Energy. I think this is just the decision making here for Benny. What is the piece that I want to grab? It looks like it will be the Charizard, but with the retreat, with an energy being prized and with one being on the active, there's only six fire energy total, so may need to also play something like Super Rod to make sure that this Charizard gets powered up, and if not this turn, definitely in the upcoming turns. Yeah, I mean, it would've been nice if you could, maybe you could've just quick searched for a fire energy just to attach that and just sort of take a knockout, but no fire energy available in the deck, so we're gonna just grab the Charizard instead, and uh, actually it's gonna be boss's orders on the other Coridon, maybe just trying to buy a little time here. It does have a retreat cost of two, so Gabriel's gonna have a bit of a hard time, as we already mentioned, moving it out of the active, given that he doesn't really play many switching cards and does have the oh. Penny in hand. Okay, Penny making its debut so far in this deck. A card that Gabriel put into this deck a little bit different than his brother, maybe with some of the advice that Gabriel got from the day one experience from Vinny. He is going to play that at the perfect opportunity, getting that Coridon out of play. It served its purpose, and now, with how late in the game and how close Gabriel is to taking all these prize cards, is a great Pokemon to just discard and get out of the hand. And it looks like Ariel's done us a huge favor here. We see, we see the dice indicating just how many are in there. So we're going to save us a little bit more maps in the future. So that is currently 19 in the discard pile. Though. But Gabriel was very, very close to that critical mass at this point. And 260 damage. And let's not forget, Pidgeot EX is a two prize Pokemon. Being an EX, there is always going to be the threat of that boss's orders on Gabriel's side is playing that one copy. Who knows, something like a Vengeance Fletching this turn to knock out Radiant Charizard, and then a boss's orders the following turn could be what Gabriel needs to close up this game. Yeah, definitely some Ancient Booster Energy Capture going onto the active Roaring Moon as well for good measure, just to make the cave even harder. And yeah, Vengeance Fletching takes a knockout on the Radiant Charizard. Back to Benny, and uh, yeah, if you're Benny, what do you do here? You gotta start to disrupt your opponent. You gotta find some sort of combination. If there was either an Iono or a Rare Candy in this hand, Benny could do both, but doesn't have either piece, and now how do you ever just let your opponent keep their massive hand? Yeah, he's gonna have to just use this uh, focus off, but does find that Ultra Ball. Okay. So with, but the problem is Ultra Ball is okay, but it would require him to maybe have to put Luminion V into play. 
It's not what you exactly want to find, but it will help Benny get to this position where he can take a knockout with Charizard EX and disrupt Gabriel, put him down to two cards in hand, and hope that this last Charizard EX, or potentially an additional one, can get him across the finish line. And I guess at this point, it doesn't matter as much, right? Because Gabriel's at that point where maybe you can almost get a big knockout on a two prize anyway. So putting the Luminion down, obviously, it does make things a little bit easier. But I don't think in the grand scheme of things, you just need to go for it at this point. Now is the turn that you, you know, take this risk. You just need to find a disruption. You need to set up your attackers. And you need to just prevent Gabriel from being able to find the last of resources. And Iona is going to be the way to do that. You got to do what you got to do at this point. I mean, with the way things are, boss's orders would win the game regardless. Can once this Pokemon is knocked out, along with that booster energy capsule hitting the discard pile, yep, exactly. it will be within range, and Benny understands this is what I've got to do. It's not also bad to have a V Pokemon down. Benny has yet to use that Star Alchemy V Star power, so maybe later on, if he starts to get some momentum back in his court, now to come back, find those critical pieces towards the end to secure himself a victory. Super Rod going to shuffle in free energy back. Very, very important to do so. There aren't any energy in the deck currently. Going to bench a Charmander as well, and then finally go for that Quick Search. And you've got to imagine this is going to be for the Rare Candy. And then after that, going to be Luminion, then Luminous Sign for that Iono, and Prey. Combination of cards are here for Benny. Could also see maybe some sort of Countercatcher play, but I think Benny just wants to have that resource for later on in the game. So here we go. We'll see two energy onto this Charizard X, one onto the bench Charmander, and... After this, it's going to be Iono and Prey for Benny. And hope that Gabrielle is just not able to get specific pieces. I think the one thing that would make this just a little bit better here for Benny is if he could maybe find that copy of Lost City. It would not only make sure that that Roaring Moon doesn't go to the discard pile, so it's one less ancient card in there, but it would also remove that Pokestop, maybe hindering Gabrielle's ability to get back into this game. Let's see that uh, Gabriel, but we have most of it. Looks like Gabriel will literally draw the last two cards of the deck, and like his hand will become the deck now. And but it looks like did not find the lost city off of that Iono. Let's find that pal pad. So oh, okay. with some of those supporter cards discarded early. Maybe that Turo that could come back into the deck as a way to maybe heal this off. And Benny is going full disruption mode, full stall mode. We usually see this in some of our control decks, but Charizard with Pidgeot. I mean. Just got a little bit more attacking power than these decks that are not dedicated to using Charizard EX. We'll see the Professor Turo come back in, as well as the Airy. And there it is, Burning Darkness, knocking out this Roaring Moon. Benny is going to put himself back into this game, but he's still got a big hill to climb. He's still got to find multiple knockouts, and more importantly, Gabriel has a few Pokemon powered up. So at worst, is still okay if he doesn't do much this turn. That is true, and now 22 ancient cards in the discard pile so that is going to wait 22 or 20? 21 21 okay yeah yep. so no, but that is going to be that is 280 damage so that pitchock can be knocked out that uh, luminion can be knocked out and there's only with fine boy ancient cards even the charizard can be knocked out so let's see can gabriel, gabriel put it together it's going to be good for a poker stop and three items Ooh. found there and i think this is exactly what gabriel wanted he's going to count the cards in his deck if there's a boss's orders left he can play this poke gear let's see how many cards are there, there and is. he does have the boss's orders to bring up that Luminion and take the first game down is Gabriel Fernandez on his path to become a back-to-back -back international champion. That first game is making it look like that could be the case. A phenomenal uh, game there from Gabriel, really showing the power of Ancient Box in full force, just like uh, Vinny did yesterday. Built your deck around Pokestop, it can really come back to harm you. Don't know if it would have been extremely relevant in that case. Of course, even with that Hero's Cape at the end, one of those Pokemon could have been knocked out, but this something to note, see if that finds a little bit more use in this. On the ones once again, and then a lot harder to access as well because it is at the top of the prizes, but uh, we're just gonna have to make do without it. And it looks like we are ready to kick off here in our game two. And it looks like uh, Benny's gonna start with the Manaphy and Gamera's gonna start with that Fluttermane. So it looks like Benny opting to go second in this position. It would force Gabrielle to go first. Sometimes this ancient deck just wants to play things like Explorer's Guidance early on to get some of those ancient cards in the discard pile and sort of get those key pieces into the hand, and then eventually you saw how getting Professor Sada's vitality every turn as your supporter is super impactful. There is still a nest ball in hand for Gabrielle, and we see immediately Radiant Greninja looking like the choice off of a nest ball. And this makes complete sense, right? Yeah, Radiant Greninja, we saw just uh, you know, turn after turn, just building up more resources in hand, getting those energies in a discard pile. It is definitely the thing you want to see early on as soon as possible, just to get yourself into the game. We'll take note of that A-Spec being prized. It's one of the easier cards to check now that you're prize checking because it's really hard to miss it. It stands out with that pink hue it has all around. They've changed a little bit. I really like the way these new A-Specs look. Very, very appealing. Yeah, 
the, the, actually the, the gorgeous pink. In contrast with the, the gray that they used to be, of course, I remember, yeah, yeah, computer search. There is one gray uh, aspect they can still play, of course, so that old Master Ball still uh, yeah, got, yeah, got uh, remade uh, now, so you can uh, break, have that old one if you want, but it's, uh, that would be the only gray one. The rest, it is pink all the way, baby. Yeah, I don't even want to think about how old both of our competitors were when that Master Ball came out. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. You know what? A lot of time has passed. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting old, but you know what's not getting old? still that we have between our players. I think Gabrielle is really just thinking about how he wants to uh, really sequence the rest of this turn. I think there's maybe a Poke Gear in this hand. The big thing early is just getting down these basic Pokemon. Once you get these Karaidon, Roaring Moon into play, the rest of it becomes easy. It's just getting energy in the discard pile, getting ancient cards in the discard pile, finding those supporters to accelerate. So let's see what the rest of the hand looks like. So there's at least an energy and it looks like an earthen vessel as well. Okay. I think what Gabrielle is thinking about doing here is just trying to draw into more cards that are potentially energy and just saving that discarding effect so that he has not only an energy to attach this turn, but also energy to concealed cards away in the future. Do you think this is what he should be doing? Or yeah. would you really like to see him maybe play that vessel first? It, it, it's very tough because you want more angel cards in the discard pile, but I think, yeah, you, you just, I think going for the concealed cards now just makes the most sense because if you do hit another ancient card, then you can discard it, get more energy, and then, oh, let's is that a oh, it's two double. side of vitality? Okay. Mm. So now does have this earthen vessel, and that is the show of a strong hand. When on your first turn, going first, you're discarding one of those supporter cards that allows your deck to just keep on chugging every turn. We'll see the fighting energy get grabbed, and I mean this is now an interesting choice for Benny. I'm sure we'll just see the energy come down onto the Roaring Moon, but there is the potential that if you want to attach to this Flutter Main, next turn, Professor Sada plus a way to really attach an energy could allow you to use that attack, but I think Gabriel's made the right choice. Flutter Main's really just not worth investing into. We're just gonna see the attachment, the pass over, and Benny, finally this game, having an excellent supporter to start things off in that Arvin. Yeah, I was a little bit worried looking at the rest of the hand. It didn't look too strong, but then as soon as I saw the Arvin, I thought, yeah, no, you know what, never mind. Benny is good to go. He's gonna be able to find that Buddy Buddy Puffin and uh, that Hero's Cape straight away. Just, uh, I think the Forest Seal Stone's already in hand, so yeah, just why not grab the Hero's Cape inst instead, make sure that it doesn't end up getting uh, you know, milled away with Pokestop again. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic on how and when you want to use the Hero's Cape. There is an argument to use the Hero's Cape early, put it onto a Pokemon that's out of range, to put it out of range from being knocked out, to really slow your opponent down in terms of the prize race, and eventually that Hero's Cape, it will give you the lead you need to run away with the game, especially when your Pokemon have so much HP. 330 is a lot for this Charizard. We are, however, going to see the V-Star power used early, and this is Benny valuing that setup early on. Yeah, it is. So instead of grabbing the Buddy Puffin straight away, just ended up going for the Nest Ball to grab the Rotom, attach the Forest Seal Stone, Star Alchemy, and use that to grab the Buddy Puffin instead. So that way, you kind of, you get an extra Pokemon for free in that way, right? Because now you have the Rotom down, and yeah, you used your V-Star power, but now not only can you set up your bench, but you can also end your turn on an instant charge and draw free cards. I think the only other question is, do we see an energy card come down? That could be a card... That Benny could hold in the hand. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility on Ultra Ball, potentially. I mean, there is a very, very... Uh, it's not even really possible, though. I was thinking you could maybe find a way to pivot out and then use Boss's Orders on the Lone Charmander, but with Gabrielle not playing something like that Prime Catcher, looks like this Charmander will be safe. Instant Charge to end the turn off. Gabrielle has a lot of key pieces in the hand. An Earthen Vessel to boost those counts of the, uh, the Ancient Cards in the discard pile does have that earthen vessel to get the energies out. This is looking excellent again here for Gabrielle. This is how you draw it up here, Freya. Yeah, this is looking absolutely phenomenal for, for Gabrielle. Just setting up really, really well, just like you did in game one. You're getting more ancient cards in the discard pile, and uh, we know that there's the Sardis Vitality good to go as well, but it looks like it's gonna be just another Explorer's Guide. Oh no, that's just the discard pile. But yeah, you gotta play the Sardis Vitality this turn. Yeah, you can play Sardis Vitality. I think it's just gonna be the Explorer's Guide oh, this year as a supporter. Okay. I think Gabrielle's main concern is if you take this knockout, and Benny, all of a sudden, is in a position where you have to commit your energy to, for turn potentially to retreat this off. If you don't find a basic Pokemon and you play this Sada, then you are really going to be at a disadvantage. And you are, again, locking yourself into those supporter cards on consistent turns. Right, Gabriel was just using those at opportune times game one. And it didn't even feel like he needed Sada because he just found times to use it in between those attacks. Albeit, Benny didn't put on a lot of pressure, so it could go a little bit differently. He's just for now going to see which four cards he wants to keep. Looks like we will also see that Sada hit the discard pile. And not sure we see Roaring well. Moon, yeah. Yeah, of course, it is a little bit brutal. We did see it was a sort of a vital tech card just uh, right at the end of that game one. But uh, in this instance, just valuing the other resources too much so that Penny will have to go. So after that, it is just another energy attachment and then it's back to Benny. Yeah, this is good as well for Gabrielle. Just 
putting this Flutter main in the active spot, the way this would work out is if Benny really wants to push his aggression with Charizard, he's not knocking out a super valuable Pokemon. Everyone knows how this Charizard deck functions. In most cases, it's going to be extremely unlikely that Benny has the combination of Rare Candy Charizard plus Boss's Orders. And even to put all of those resources invested into that, it's a lot. It means that Pidgeot doesn't get established, and Gabrielle is more than okay with that, even if it means one of these Roaring Moon are to be knocked out. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the thing when you're playing a single price focus deck. You don't really mind, you know, one or maybe two knockouts early on because you know the later the game goes on, the more you can uptrade favorably and... It, you just really don't mind that in at that instance, especially because like, Benny's not even like, taking uh, prizes here, just attaching the TM Devolution and then another instant charge. Another slow start for Benny, not what you want against a deck that wants to just get ahead and start the race, start the prize race. Gabrielle getting a bonus turn, essentially, can now play that Sada's Vitality, allowing this Fluttermane to retreat thanks to that energy acceleration. You can draw three additional cards. This is how you draw it up for Gabrielle. You're gonna take the prize lead again. You're gonna have two Roaring Moon powered up and you're gonna have a huge sand, hand size while your opponent has yet to put Pidgeot or Charizard into play. Yeah, these slow starts really, really hurting Benny here as he's uh, not able to take any kind of you know, early, early prize early just to try and uh, make, uh, swing that tempo back in his favor. So instead it's gonna be Gabriel taking the first prize just on this mana fee, but not for maybe a concealed card just to draw some, draw some more, setting up another Roaring Moon on the bench with energy as well just to keep that attacking chain going. And yeah, Gabriel's in a super good position in this game too. There it is, Vengeance Fletching taking the knockout. Gabriel strikes first in game two. Five prize cards away from becoming a back-to-back -back international champion. Wow, phenomenal stuff here from Gabriel. But you know, let's not count Benny out yet. You know, this Charizard deck is very powerful. We know that it's known for its comebacks. We know that, you know, disruption can come into play. And there is the Arvin now here from Benny as well. So definitely going to try and make use of that to try and pull something together. Getting the energy ready has the, you know, the rare candy and the Ultra Ball. I think we're going to see a Charizard knockout here. Hopefully can get both that Pidgeot and the Charizard out. And I think the way this hand looks can play the Ultra Ball out. And by having that Charizard in hand, there will be the resources here for Benny to get both the Rare Candy Pidgeot and Rare Candy Charizard into play. Quick Search finally online. And I mean, for Benny, you gave up that first prize. But honestly, with how your response is looking this turn, that's more than okay. I think Benny's still got a big shot in this game and is now finally getting these Pokemon powered up. Yeah, he knows exactly what he's, he's got to do here. You know, firing on all cylinders now that the setup is all there. Red Candy Pidgeot, Red Candy Charizard, Infernal Rain. Set up your Charizard, set up the other Charmander, and uh, just start taking prizes. And now it's going to be really hard for Gabriel because he's going to have such a hard time to taking knockouts on these huge Charizard EXs. So we'll see the retreat into that Charizard. Burning Darkness, because there is no booster capsule, doesn't even matter because of the prize taken. We'll get the knockout. Benny evens things up at five prizes. And the big question here now for Gabrielle, how is this hand? You've had turns to build this up with the Explorer's Guidance, Professor Sada. It looks like there's lots of resources at his disposal. Potentially another one of those Professor Sada's Vitality. And there are plenty of energies in the discard pile. I think we're going to see this get played here for Gabrielle, and we do. Yeah, we do. Sada's Vitality, uh, just chaining those turn after turn is going to be exactly what Gabrielle wants. Because if your opponent is putting out a threat where suddenly they're attacking uh, you know, fast and consistently, what do you do? Just do the same in return, but do it on one prizes so that you win that prize trade. And that is exactly, that's really one of the biggest strengths that this uh, ancient box archetype has, especially the single prize version without the Roaring Moon EX. I think the last thing maybe for Gabrielle is again getting an energy attachment down onto a valuable Pokemon. And with this Ultra Ball, Gabrielle has another Dark Energy. He could potentially get himself another Pokemon powered up. But even in this position, Gabrielle is not forced to play Asada for the next couple of turns. He can just next turn a manual attach and then the turn after that play a manual attachment down too. That's really how using these Sadas for full effect at opportune times allows you to have as much pacing and as much tempo in your control as possible. The way Gabriel has played this, every single time he's played Asada, it has been for two energy. So he can keep his attacking chain going and he knows his, his tempo of energy attachments is always on point. So he's not worried about ever missing an attack or ever missing a beat. And that's exactly how he's going to win against Benny. We'll actually preemptively play this Pokey Gear. Looking okay. Or supporter cards potentially is going to just get another Professor Sada into the hand. And this is pretty interesting here for Gabriel. I feel like you've got to maybe have some sort of understanding of Benny really wanting to disrupt your hand, especially now that you grab this Sada. 
This could be a little bit of a bluff here. You play the Poke Gear, you look to find a good supporter, and even though that supporter is good, maybe the rest of the cards in your hand aren't that impactful, and you maybe put Benny onto this thought process of, oh, his hand has to be good. He has that powerful supporter. I've got to use my Quick Search to find something like Iono. Yeah, and that, and that means if you're, you're doing Quick Search for Iono, you're not using Quick Search to find something else that could actually be more impactful. We did see also the... Uh, the area in that last game, you know, picking off uh, two cards. End up not mastering too much at the end, but that could be very, very different this time. That's another point as well, right? If Aerie got played that turn, you would just discard the Poke Gear. So Gabrielle playing around that very smartly. Maybe there's just no other powerful resources to really chain together supporters if there wasn't one in the hand. And he's got a lot of options at this point. This Charizard will take 200 damage from Vengeance Fletching. There is a Nest Ball. We could see that get played, and we do and get down another Charmander for when this Charizard EX eventually gets knocked down. Yeah, we do see that very interesting uh, Giacomo supporter there. Not going to be something that's uh, relevant against uh, Gabriel, of course. It does discard a special energy from each one of your opponent's uh, Pokemon, but uh, yeah, no special energy in uh, Gabriel's deck, unfortunately, for Benny. <laughs> Here we go. Quick search for Benny. Lots of different options. And yes, we'll grab that Iono. So Gabriel's hand will be shuffled, put onto the bottom of the deck, and five cards will be drawn. Gabriel has also not put Pokestop into play yet. So that will not be a tool he has after this Iono, unless he can draw into it off of these five cards. So it's going to be very, very crucial here to see what Gabriel finds off of this Iono. So there it is. Iono for five for both players. Does Gabriel find, I mean, I was going to say, does he find any, anything useful? But at this point, this is exactly why Gabriel's setup is so strong. Even with just the board that he has, he knows he has a follow-up knockout guaranteed. So even if he doesn't draw amazing off of this, he can still keep up his chain of attacks going. And that's exactly why he's preemptively just doing these starters and doing these energy attachments to keep himself guaranteed to carry on that chain as long as possible. Yeah, I think a card Benny may have really wanted to potentially find in this position is something like that Charmeleon, just to not force you to have to play Rare Candy because you are essentially understanding that this Charizard EX is more than likely getting knocked out. But Benny, for the first time, taking the prize lead in game number two. But with Gabrielle having this Roaring Moon powered up, it's going to be stolen away from him again after this turn. Gabrielle does find that Pokestop, and here we go. Oh, what do we see discarded? There is oh. that Explorer's Guidance. It's not a card you like to lose, but it's not super detrimental. You do now have that Super Rod, so if you can maybe search out Roaring Moon again, you can bring those back and then bench them so they can be powered up in future turns. Yeah, and of course, not ideal, but it is, of course, another card that has that text Ancient on it. So now, with that and the Flutter Main discarded, there are 16 Ancient cards in the discard pile. We're getting close to that Critical Mask again, Ethan. Does have a Poke Gear too, and does find one of their last remaining copies of that Explorer's Guidance. Gabrielle is running a little bit low on supporter cards, so a key piece we're going to have to see come down eventually is that Palpad item card that can shuffle two supporter cards from your discard pile into Opa, your deck. Opa, vai usar See the Explorer's Guidance get played. Vai botar so mais uma six, carta para dar dano. Discard for really just looking for either é bom esse carta, esse deck do, place, do Gabriel, né? Or that super odd, maybe some Pokemon search. Yeah, and of course you can afford to do this now, right? Because you have been so good, fraco, you vai dando dano, you take a turn to just dig more through the deck instead. You know, you find energy, you can attach that, and then you have your next attack ready to go, and then you can find other resources that maybe like that counter catcher to bring something up. So right now there are 16 ancient cards in the discard pile. We'll be set. Eu acho que a forma de lidar com esse deck, mano, é você push, tenta ter uma horda chefe e dá-lhe no no um green ninja que ele para de puxar carta, já dá uma enfraquecida. Where they could be good or they could be bad. It really just depends. And we're actually going to see the Explorer's Guidance also potentially just be kept or discarded. It's kind of confusing to see whether or not we're seeing Ultra Ball get played right now. But I think Gabriel's just deciding which cards he wants to discard and will actually discard that Ultra Ball along with some other cards. And it looks like actually all hey, the cards are to bring in the discard pile off of that Explorer's Guidance. Yeah, not ideal. I mean, you would like to see a lot of it. Uh, it's just sometimes how it goes. And in fact, they're going to be a Super Rod played. Shuffling back in a couple of those Roaring Moons, you do need to... Push the Super Vara, he'll push two cards, right? Yeah, he'll push the two Moons and he'll have enough energy to make sure that he's going to have enough attack to save the game. And with this Super Rod, it means that Gabriel, from this point on, if he doesn't need to do something like that, he'll have a lot of attack to save the game. He'll have to push the Pokemon that won't be eliminated and put them in the game. He'll have to push the Pokemon to finish this game off. With many at four prize cards, Gabriel can just use Roaring Moon four times with four different Roaring Moon to attack. I hope that that's enough. That Ultra Ball being discarded, I think the thought process here for Gabriel is ah, see tudo. Earthen Vessel get played, deck will be searched, we'll see if there are maybe some energy cards left, we did see one get shuffled into the deck, we could be relying off of a concealed card, that were just shuffled back in. 
Yeah, we, yeah, we could. And uh, in the meantime, it was like just, uh, was that one energy grabbed off of the earthen vessel? Wait, hold on. Yeah, just one off the earthen vessel. Okay. And then we're also going to see Nest Ball. So Roaring Moon, number three, coming down into play. Gabrielle is still finding what he needs. He's keeping pace, and he is in a super solid Look position. Many he's come down to Benny doing all he can to continue to stream attackers, disrupt, and then maybe, just maybe, the extra HP from that hero's cape could be what Benny needs to make sure that final knockout doesn't occur. Wow, this is uh, down to the wire as uh, ever. I mean, we're not even, you know, multiple prize cards are in the okay, game. Okay, all, all to play for. Gabrielle knows that he's in a very, very good position. It's going to be, yeah, not quite enough for a knockout there. But, oh, wait, no, wait, no, hold on. We're just counting. Oh, just counting. Okay, yep. I was going to say, because that damage already on it, so it wouldn't make, wouldn't make much sense. But yeah. uh, just going to count up those ancient cards. Who can you have to do? Yeah, currently sitting on 16. Ah, he can mark how much he has, you know? So now it's going to be the Vengeance Fletching. Kale on the active Charizard, two prizes for Gabrielle. And it's up to ah, he arrebentou the Zard. He took two prizes. That could really be the deal for Gabrielle, notably that Awakening Drum. Very, very specific math that he needs, very specific amount. Ele brincou o Charizard dele e puxou dois prêmios aqui em cima, Gabriel. Action is back on Benny. A few cards now active for him. That counter catcher really could be a potential way to disrupt through Gabriel. You could see something like Iono plus counter catcher onto Radiant Greninja. Or we could see Benny just continue to target these attackers down and force Gabriel. Ele botou isso aqui para marcar quantos tem ali, né? We'll need that to attack with one of these roaring moons. Yeah, well, the logo. Sitting, sitting the Radiant Charizard here, of course, uh, with Gabriel having taken three prizes, only going to need two energy to attack. But maybe if you do that, maybe you. In 160 de dano aqui. A little bit easier because you can just, you know, kill this. Mais 70, né, que bate. Orders to bring up the Rotom V for the last few prizes. Yeah, that Pidgeot EX 280 HP is definitely a lot more realistic. That Rotom as well. Let's not forget, Benny does play something like the Professor Turo, so we could. But I'll do what I have to do here. Rotom gets picked up. Gabriel will not have that easy, liable two prizes in play to be knocked out. And of course, that wasn't viable in the last game because we did see that Professor Turo got discarded off of one of the poker stops that really hurt Benny in game one. O ruim que o Pidgeot dele não 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 arrebenta, né? E dá 120 de dano, né? O Horimon tem 140. Very interesting. We're actually going to see Luminion get lost soon. That can always be a card. Os Over Stars. He disrupted, and this is Benny's best play here, it seems. Get rid of this poker stop. Put Gabriel down onto a Atacou, board Gabriel. card hand. And, uh oh, it looks like we maybe saw a card hit the. Okay, well, yeah. it looks like everything's good. Yeah. Sometimes when you put the cards on the bottom, I have some horror stories. Ah, não pode atacar, está com energia. Of passou. This isn't about me. This is about our two competitors, and there is Ultra Ball. Ah, não passou Benny. ainda não. Can maybe grab that Charmeleon or Charizard, especially with Quick Search still at his disposal. Yeah, looks like uh, actually going to super. Super Vara. Good measure. Put back some energy. It's going to be very. I pick energy. Yeah, you can Quick Search. For that uh, energy red candy, red candy Charizard, and you get all those energies out, and you basically have all your attackers set up for the rest of the game. And yeah, you use the ability of Pidgeot, Pegou, Docehar, Plugou no Charmander, Plugou, os três energias. Caraca, man. Zero cards in hand, playing everything out. Boa jogada aí do Balinga. Eu botaria o Charizard porque ainda tem três ali, né? O Radiante ainda não bate. Aí tá, tá, tá formado aqui o Benny. Benny tá formado, arrebentou aqui o Pokémon aqui do Rolimon. Pegou mais uma energia. Gabriel vai ter que arrebentar os Zard dele. Pode ser que tenha dois turnos para ele arrebentar os Zard dele. Usou Poké Gear de novo. Essa Poké Gear. Mais Pokémons ancestrais lá. Knew where his supporter cards were, maximized his odds, and it paid off with it being the seventh. Essa porque aqui é chave no 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 deck do Gabriel, cara. Shovels to the bottom of the deck. You know that you have a sort of a more awareness of the positioning of the cards in the deck, so you can use that to your advantage. As Gabriel did here, it pays off in spades. And now playing all of these searching cards, Nest Ball to get that final Roaring Moon down. The Earthen Vessel to find a Fighting Energy that can always be discarded with something like Concealed cards. I think Gabriel has found what he needs this turn. The Professor Sada can power up both of the Roaring Moon, and we still haven't seen something like a manual attachment come down. Here we go, Professor Sada's vitality accelerating to energy, and Gabriel will continue to draw through his deck. 
Now, does Gabriel still have access to Boss's orders? I don't think I, I don't know, but I right. So I think he's still in the I think he still got access to it. That was super important in that first game. Descartou que com habilidade do do Green Ninja e aí ele compra duas cartas. That superior energy retrieval can bring back four energy cards from the discard pile at the Cara, Gabriel vai ganhar esse jogo. Ele tá plugando muito o Ancestral lá pra tentar arrebentar o Charizard de uma vez. Recuperador de energia. Pegou energia pra caramba, hein? Can he get there to the Charizard? I mean, a five extra seems like a bit of a big ask. I don't think quite get there, but uh, still a very good thing. 110, 210, 210, mais 70. 290 de dano ele vai dar. And reestablish Charizard EX. Keeping it powered up, which we already see two Charizard in play. This is going to be a big top deck. 240. Yeah, off of two cards, you would. I think literally have to have the combination of, of two of rare candy Charizard and Turtle. Yeah, <coughs> that is just really a lot to ask for, especially when you had no cards to start the turn except for the prize and your top deck. Now Benny's got to decide: Do I just play the Iono in hand? Do I maybe quick search for something? Iono, we'll so Benny will get three cards. Todos eles vão embaralhar. Well. Quem fica com três cartas na mão? Todos have access to quick search, so either. Try and start building up another Seria boa para confusar, fazer confusão na, no deck, né? Já a gente vai ter que arrebentar isso aqui. Pidgeot. <coughs> tá vendo o que ele pode fazer, né, cara? Difícil. Gabriel tá com o outro montado lá. Gabriel tem uma fácil mapa para apenas pegar dois e depois pegar algo mais para ganhar o jogo. Especialmente com a Bossa Dordas em mão. Benny está em um lugar muito, muito difícil. I think it's all going to come down to two specific cards here, potentially, for Benny that I have my eye out for. It's that Hero's Cape we haven't seen come down yet. Bank to Baby Moon and Tensei, man. Charizard gets knocked out, but I think this is actually a really smart play here from Benny. Retreat this Charizard, sort of just leave it on the bench. He recuou o Charizard. He sacrificou as duas energias. If you can put yourself in a position where Gabriel cannot take a Boa jogada do Benny. Turn, then you essentially clinch the game. Boa jogada do Benny. Having that Radiant Charizard plus Charizard EX and this is Benny's best play at this position. This does activate something like Counter Catcher for Gabriel. Boa Charizard. 100% agree with what he's doing. Meteu duas energia lá de novo. Need, but it's going to be a big turn for Gabriel if he cannot either hit 330 damage or take a knockout via boss's orders or Ele plugou uma energia aqui, né? But we know that Gabriel has the boss's orders in hand already. Oh wow. <coughs> Boa jogada do Benny, arrebentou o Rorimun. Pega mais um. Faltam dois ali no Benny Bailey. I mean, having boss right now, it's definitely what you need. I mean, you're gonna have to find. Oh, I guess. Tá são complicada para Gabriel agora, hein? Porém, ele tem ali 180. E se Charizard can come up with something like the Hero's Cape, if you go after two Ordem da chefia. Ordem da chefia. Quem que ele vai pegar? Pidgeot? Talvez. É. Porque o Charizard é then all of a sudden the way things work is Gabriel will not have any other way to go Por que ele puxou o Charizard adiante, mano? Só pega uma. So he needs to take a one prize knockout this turn, otherwise a Charizard can just sit in the active with a Hero's Cape and Gabriel cannot deal 430 damage to it. So right, Gabriel's yeah. going to take the best line to play and does have the pal pad as well to potentially put back some more Para que que ele puxou o Charizard adiante, mano? Eu, eu, eu teria pegado o Rotom para eliminar o próprio Charizard, né, mano? O que que ele pegou o Radiante? Ele pegou o Radiante. 
Oh no, maybe I should give me double explorer's diamond instead. It's so tough because Gabrielle's hand is pretty weak as it is. Doesn't really have any other cards to work with, and there's not even an energy on that bench drawing moon. So I mean, Gabrielle will have to find either a combination of energy plus 26 cards in the discard pile, but that's if there's no hero's cape, or he has to find boss's orders plus energy, and that is just really a lot to ask for. However, his deck is just so thin, so. Maybe it is a possibility if there's something like an energy still remaining to concealed cards of something away. <coughs> it's going to be Pal Pal for the two explorers guidance and then Super Rod just to put the energy back so you have the means to attack and yeah, so I mean, just, just one energy. Super you know, Rana. Back even more. Yeah, this is very tactical from Gabriel. Wants to just maximize his outs off of something like Iono to give himself the hey, best tô, pegou mais uma carta. what he needs. But again, does not draw that awakening draw, baby Gabriel. É bem, tô... Ele preferiu pegar uma carta só, cara. Ele tem certeza que vai ganhar no próximo turno. Com o que ele fez. Eu teria arrebentado logo o Zard dele. Ou o PJ. Either of those pieces we're gonna see as he checks through the deck is the hero's cape there, and it, it is. is, and you see it being queued to the top, and he knows that this is what he needs to find to make sure his Charizard EX does not get knocked out. Ben, this is a solid one. Faltam dois para cada um. Só que o Ben só pode tirar um. Ben só pode tirar um. Gabriel vai ganhar. Ah, mas fez o Benny sofrer, cara. Já podia ter arrebentado o Charizard já na outra rodada. Vamos ter mais um 2x0, um mano. Não, não Oh, I don't. I think Countercatcher is still. The, yeah, the Countercatcher is in the hand. It oh, looks like. Okay. Oh, we know it's in the discard pile. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's what, that's so what hard. Saying, yeah. But you don't forget though. It's not just the one copy. Oh, there are two in the deck. Okay. So Kappa. this is the tough situation right. for Benny. So. Is do you grab the Hero's Cape or do you grab Iono? And I think with how this is working out, you have to be very, very careful. Ele tem a capa. Remove one card from the. Por que ele jogou um estádio de desespero? It's going to come down at this turn here. Eu ia ter jogado o estádio desde cedo, né? Então, eu acho que a minha que havia apenas um Counter do Counter Catcher. Não, há dois, então isso é o momento de turn. Aqui vamos. O Juzard arrebentou. Ele está a um. Poké Gear de novo. Já era. Vamos apenas jogar, encontrar a Explorer Guidance e vamos ver o resto do resto do deck. If Gabriel can find himself Porque, an energy yeah, card and one of those counter catcher, he can Cara, ele devia ter jogado Lost Sist desde cedo, né? Acabou. Gabriel Fernandes, brasileiro, campeão da classe sênior. Gabriel, campeão, mano. Aê, mano. Gabriel, que deck, hein, de Rory Moon, cara. Que deck, que top. Deck top de Rory Moon, mano. Deck top de Rory Moon, mano. E essa, galera, foi a final senho aí. É, pra quem não acompanhou, eu trouxe também a final júnior. É, temos aqui a final senior e temos a final master com um deck muito bom que eu fiz uma live aí é, com o deck do Charizard do final master muito rotativo muito bom o deck do cara nessa nova rotação e se você gostou aí da análise da final aí acompanhar a final já aproveita e deixa aquele like para ajudar a gente no canal se inscreva se não é inscrito ative o sininho da notificação e não perca mais nada são um dos games forte abraço e até a próxima falou galera